A knock on my door jolts me awake. I sit straight up in bed and barely notice a tiny yelp as the pongo tumbles to the floor. Hello? The knocking stops. It's Leanna! Are you about ready? I rub my eyes and blink at the feeble rays of light outside. What time is it? It's past dawn. We need to get a move on if we want to make a good time. Dawn? There's no good reason anyone should be awake at this hour. I attempt to lay back down in my bed when the knocking starts again. Alright, alright, I'll be there in a minute. The noise stops. I yawn and stretch, then notice the pongo on the floor. What are you doing on the floor, buddy? Weren't you sleeping on the bed? The pongo wiggles and shoots me an accusatory look. Poi, po -poi, poi. I glance at the slight indentation on my pillow and back at the blue mass on the floor. Sorry, I didn't mean to knock you off. I did. He looks cautiously at me, then hops onto the bed and up onto my head. Poi, poi. He nips at my hair, then jiggles. I guess that means he's forgiven me. I push myself to my feet and begin getting dressed. Once I've grabbed all my things, I push open the door and nearly collide with Leanna. Whoa. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Leanna nods and leads the way out of the inn. I follow her through the town as we head north. It's a lot quieter than when we first arrived in the town. And when we first arrived, as the town gradually begins to wake up. We don't run into too many people on the street. Although the shops aren't open yet, I can see the shopkeeper is busy prepping for the day. Right before we reach the edge of town, a guard stops us. There's been heightened bandit activity reported on these roads. Leanna's brows crease. Are the roads closed? No, but until we get a handle on the bandit activity, we're advising everyone to stay in town. We can't stay. Where are you headed? We're headed to Illumia. The guard notices the sigil on Leanna's manipulator. You're a mage knight? She nods. As the guard turns his focus to me, I draw attention to the blade on my hip. He nods gruffly, then moves out of the way. Just be careful out there. Thank you. She motions for me to follow her. Once we're back on the familiar dirt path, I take one last look at Meadow Hill Village before refocusing on the road ahead of me. Our trek along the path is peaceful. The forest gradually awakens with birdsong and the scuttling of woodland animals. Having grown up in the city, the sounds of nature still startle me, and I glance at every rustle of the leaves. Leanna, though, seems unfazed. Her eyes routinely survey her surroundings. Suddenly, she freezes. I nearly bump into her. What the? Shh. I fall silent as she listens. When she speaks, her voice is a whisper. Did you hear that? I strain my ears, listening for anything out of place. Then I hear the voices among the trees. Bandits? A strangled scream pierces the air, scaring a flock of birds into flight. Someone might be in danger! Her previous caution abandoned, Leanna sprints towards the sound, and I follow at her heels. We both take cover as the trees open up, revealing a man in a trench coat surrounded by five bandits. One more bandit lies motionless on the ground. Upon seeing their fallen comrade, the bandits all unsheath their weapons. Three of them hold long swords, and two of them point guns. The trench-coated man doesn't stir. His dark hair falls over his eyes, and I can't see his face. He won't get away from us this time. Take him out. The man pushes open his coat and draws two guns as the bandits converge. Leanna sets her jaw. Stay here! As soon as the words fall from her lips, she raises up from the trees. Her hair whips behind her, and her white coattails billow in a graceful arc. She moves faster than any human, as if the air is pushing her forward instead of dragging her down. Her gauntlet hands clenches up, and a blue sphere glows, then disappears as she smashes her fist into the nearest bandit. He flies away from her and crashes against a tree before crumpling into a heap. A mage knight? She must be with him. Or she's after the bounty. Take her out, too! The mysterious man fires a hail of purple blasts at the bandits, catching one of them in the chest. Then deflects the sword from another bandit with her own blade. I can't just sit here and do nothing. I have to help. Ignoring Leanna's command, I unsheath my sword and charge into battle. So here's the moment you guys have been waiting for. So for the first encounter, click the matching icon. Okay, that was rather simplistic. 
Leanna breathes heavily as she surveys the bodies around her. She glances at me and the stranger who's still standing. Anyone hurt? I do a gentle pat down to myself and wince at my bruises. Nothing, Major. Leanna nods and then she fidgets with her manipulator. The man stays silent as he inspects his gun. Now that I have a better look at him, I realize that although his fierce skull makes him seem tough, he doesn't look that much older than me. His hair has a habit of falling around his eyes, but as he pushes it back, I notice a long scar cut across one eye. Once satisfied, he tucks his gun back into his belt and gets to his feet. He nods at us. Thanks. Then he turns away. Wait! He pauses. Where are you headed? Why? There might be more bandits around. We should team up if we're going in the same direction. Safety in numbers. He stays us in stony silence. Then his gaze flickers to her manipulator and he relaxes slightly. Where are you going? We're headed to Illumia. Me too. Leanna nods. You're from the Mage Guild? Yes. I'm Leanna. I'm Hero. Zack. Boy boy. All of us glance at the little blue pongo who seemingly popped out of nowhere. And, uh, this is our little friend. I see. Boy! I use friend loosely. The pongo winks at Zack, who stares him down. The pongo bounces uncertainly. Boy? Zack's unblinking stare never wavers, so the pongo scoots behind my leg for safety. Now that introductions are over, let's get moving. Zack waits for us to collect our things, and once we're all set, we head back onto the road. Leanne and I lead the way. The Pongo keeping pace with us, while Zack hangs a few steps behind us. So, let's talk about the speed first. Lynn, I saw you during the fight. How are you able to move so fast? Oh, I cast wind magic to manipulate my movements. Oh, so like putting on a speed buff? They're small adjustments, like shifting the draft to move me forward, or using a breeze to help lift me during jumps. Damn, that sounds awesome. She grins. The next time you're lagging behind, I'll use my wind to give you a little boost. That would be amazing. I can already imagine myself running like the wind. Lana seems pleased by my reaction. Okay, Zack, what's the deal with those guns? So, what type of gun is Zack carrying? You mean his discharger? What's a discharger? I hear a sound behind us. Zack raises an eyebrow when I turn to look at him. Did you hit your head or something? Leanna looks a little uncomfortable. He's not exactly from around here. Zack crosses his arms. I see. There's a pause. So, Discharger. It's a weapon that uses crystal spheres to power it. So it is a gun. Maybe? The spheres are the bullets. What kind of... Well, it's kind of the magazine in some sense, because it's used to fire the bullets. Or in this case, bolts of energy. Leanna looks uncertain. Although it made sense in my head, I can see why she might be confused. Never mind, I got it, thanks. Sure. She smiles. I feel Zack's gaze on me, but his expression is hard to read. So how do you know? How did Zack know you're in the Mage Guild? He saw my emblem. She lifts up her arm and points to the sigil on her manipulator. What exactly does the Mage Guild do? We investigate any type of magical anomaly. The Mage Guild in Havengard is actually headquartered in Illumia. Sort of like a police force. Anna furrows her brow. Police? Uh, like how detectives go out in the field and solve mysteries? Um, a little like that. And now it makes sense as to why both the Guard in Meadowhill Village and Zack relaxed for seeing Leanna's emblem. Well, it looks like that guard is telling the truth. There are definitely bandits on this road. Yeah. There's something in her voice which makes me think she doesn't completely agree. What is it? It's just... well, for bandits, they were pretty well equipped. She stares hard at Zack, but he doesn't react. What does that mean? Are they not bandits? Nana continues to look at Zack. I'm not sure. They were bandits. She looks sharply at Zack, obviously caught off guard. Sure. That didn't sound too convincing. The subject drops, but I still feel a little uneasy. If those guys weren't bandits, then who were they, and why were they attacking Zack? The questions circle my mind as the conversation lulls to silence. Leanna leads the way, though she seems to have something on her mind. Zack trails from behind. He remains on heightened alert. We travel together for quite some time with no further interruptions. I can feel my legs start to burn from all the walking. 
Yeah, a squint at the sky. We should make camp before it gets dark. Zack nods. There's a good spot up ahead which hides us from view. It'll still give us visibility on any intruders, though. Sounds good. Zack leads the way, and soon we reach the clearing. The three of us get to work setting up camp. I roll out my bedroll near the campfire and notice how thinly it spreads on the ground. Can this thing really be comfortable? I guess there's only one way to find out. I lay down on the bedroll and place my hands behind my head. This isn't as bad as I thought. Yawn escapes my lips. I could definitely fall asleep here. My gaze lingers in the night sky above. The moon hangs in the inky sky, dotted with so many pinpricks of silver light. They sparkle vividly as if trying to chase away the dark. I breathe out a breath in wonder. I never knew that stars could shine so brightly. I try to pick out a few constellations, but the star patterns above are unfamiliar. What are you looking at? I quickly set up the sound of Leanna's voice. She holds two steaming bowls in her hands. I accept one of the bowls with a smile as she sits beside me. Just admiring the sky. This place is really beautiful. Back where I live, you don't get to see so many stars. How come? Light pollution. Our cities are filled with so much light that it drowns out the stars. Leanna gazes thoughtfully at the sky. Right. It's a little harder to see the stars in town than it is out here. I shake my head. That's not the same. Some nights, I don't, see the, I don't see the stars at all. Her eyes widen in surprise. Then she places her chin in her hands. A night sky without stars. She looks at me. What's your world like? So, we have to decide what we want to tell her. <laughs> we have cool tech, humans are a plague to the planet. Eh, we'll do this one. We'll be really pessimistic. It used to be beautiful, just like this place, but the advancements of human society is gradually killing the planet. That doesn't sound good. It's the reason why you can't see the stars at night or blue skies during the day. What color are your skies, then? Smog. She furrows her brow. The Industrial Revolution was the rise of civilization and the destruction of nature. We burned fuels, which polluted the skies with smoke and harmful gases. Our oceans are full of waste and trash, and we've cut down our forests and turned them into housing developments. But... What about all the animals that live there? They're suffering. We're suffering too, but we don't realize it yet. How so? Our cities are always shining bright, even at night, so people continue their days and never give their bodies a chance to rest. And we live in cramped spaces, like cages. Leanna frowns and pulls her knees in closer to her chest. That sounds terrible. Maybe I was being a little too harsh. There are some things that are still good, and I'll admit that technology has made life a lot more convenient. Plus, there are still people who actually are bringing awareness to these issues and fighting to save our planet. Leanna nods. She tilts her head back and returns her gaze to the sky. Underneath the moonlight, her pale skin seems to glow amidst the darkness. Her face softens as she smiles. You're right. The stars really are beautiful. We fall into a comfortable silence as we enjoy the tranquility of the night. After we finish eating and cleaning up, Zack approaches us. It's getting late. Leanna nods. I'll take first watch so you can rest. Alright, I'll take second watch. I guess that leaves me with third. Zack stares unblinkingly at me, which Leanna, well, Leanna coughs nervously. That's okay. We had an early start, and I'm sure you're tired. We should rest up and sleep through the night. Do you guys not trust me, or what's going on here? <laughs> it almost sounds like you guys don't trust me. Although I try to keep my tone light and joking, Leanna looks guilty. No, that's not... I mean, it's not that we don't trust... Yes. She looks sharply at Zack. His arms are crossed, but his expression doesn't change. Seriously? Zack nods towards Leanna. She's part of the Mage Guild, so I know she won't pull any tricks. I don't know anything about you. Actually, it sounds like he does know me. I'm sorry. As the fire in my mind abates, I realize Zack has a point. I've given him no reason to trust me. If I were in his shoes, I'd be just as cautious. I nod. Alright, I suppose that's fair. I better get to sleep then. Good night. Good night. Zack nods. Lana flashes me one last smile before crawling into her bedroll. As she lies down, Zack positions himself against a tree and takes a seat. 
Let's talk to Zack. If we're going to be traveling together, I should make an effort to get to know what kind of person he is. I walk over to Zack. Hey. Hmm? Mind if I sit? He gestures for me to join him, so I do so. Obviously, I'll have to lead the conversation. So, how's the weather? Zack stares at me. Alright, let's switch gears. Um, are you a cat or a dog person? Is this going anywhere? I sigh. I'm trying to build some trust here, but you've got to meet me halfway. Zack looks away. Great, I guess he just doesn't want to talk. Dog. What? I prefer canines. Oh, cool. The silence creeps in again. So, we're all going to Illumia. Yep. What brings you there? I'm meeting someone. Oh? A friend? Someone from work. What do you do? I'm a mercenary. Ah, acceptable murder. So you kill people for a living. Zack crosses his arms and stands. It's getting late. You should go to sleep. Whoops. Looks like I might have hit a nerve. I get to my feet as well. Good night. He nods. So remember, I'm just trying to be friends with Leanna. Everyone else is fair game. I lay down in my bedroll and scooch around to get comfortable. I try closing my eyes to sleep, but something still doesn't feel right. Oh yeah, I need a pillow. Seeing so up, I look for anything I can use. My gaze falls on the pongo, which now is beside Leanna. Pongo, pillow, now. This is happening. Psst, pongo. The pongo blinks open bleary eyes and perks up when he notices me. Boy? Come here. Boy, boy. He happily bounces over. When he comes within reach, I make a grab for him and pluck him on my bedroll. He squeaks and protests as I lay my head on him. Boy. Like a slippery eel, he wiggles himself free and bounces back to Leanna's side. No, pongo! Boy, boy. He glares suspiciously at me. Boy. He turns his back to me and cuddles against Leanna. I sigh. Well, I guess I have no choice but to make do being pillowless. It's worth a shot. Lying back down my bedroll, I close my eyes and eventually drift to sleep. A dull throbbing in my back pulls me awake. I hadn't fully appreciated the magic of mattresses until now. A yawn escapes and I stretch widely. Aside from the achiness, I actually feel well rested. I sit up and glance around. Zack leans against a tree with his head down. His hair covers his eyes, so I can't tell if they're open or closed. Regardless, his hands rest on the handles of his dischargers. Creepy. Looking around again, I fail to spot Leanna. Where'd she go? I think I hear her cry in the distance. Is that her? I should go investigate. Crossing over a hill, I see Leanna practicing in an open field. She grips her blade in a fighting stance, her face stern with concentration. She swings her blade in a high arc, ending with a graceful spin. Judging by how fluid and accurate her movement is, it's clear she's dedicated many years to perfecting her craft. Her hair whips around her as she turns, but never seems to blow in her face. Even with heavy armor, her movements are still nimble, as if she's wearing no armor at all. I wonder if all that has to do with her wind magic. Once she notices me, she lowers her sword. Oh, sorry. Did I wake you? I moved out here so I wouldn't disturb you. No, I was already up. I didn't see you at camp, so I came looking. Gotcha. Boy! Glancing down at my feet, I spot the beaming Pongo. Leanna giggles. <laughs> Looks like you guys are best friends already. More like a stalker. I shrug. I don't think I have a choice in this friendship. Aw, don't be like that. He likes you. I look at the Pongo again. He smiles even wider than before. Boy. It's pretty early. Do you always begin your mornings with a warm-up? Leanna nods. It helps me wake up and prepare for the day ahead. Also, it's become a part of my routine, so it just doesn't feel right when I don't do it. I know what you mean. I can't go through my morning routine from Earth here on Terra, and it feels a bit strange. Right. Leanna looks down. The awkwardness creeps into the silence. She probably took that in a negative way, which wasn't my intention. That's okay, though. I can always make a new routine. New routine? I unsheath my blade and grip it. This morning practice you see, do seems like a good place to start. She grins. Considering how well you handled yourself yesterday, 
I'm curious to see what's the extent of your skill set. Uh, usually I have to date a woman first for that, right? I smirk. Only one way to find out. So, what's the lesson today, senpai? Sand pie? I shake my head. Never mind. She blinks, then refocuses and matches my fighting stance by raising her sword. Since you already have some experience with the blade, sparring will be the best way to gauge your skills. Uh, I'm ready. I tighten the grip on my blade. Ready when you are. Here I come! Leanna dashes towards me. Her movements seem slower than what they were during the bandit fight. Seems like she isn't using her wind magic. Okay, that was kind of weird. Somehow I managed to keep pace with her. Every time I think I'm about to get the upper hand, her intensity increases until we're equally matched again. Even so, I could feel her holding back. Without using magic, mage knights are still a formidable opponent with the sword, especially if they're anything like Lyanna. We go back and forth with a few more swings until Lyanna strikes from above. I hurriedly block with my sword, but I lose my balance in my hurry and topple to the ground, landing on my back. Oof. Lyanna kneels down beside me. Your fundamentals are solid. If you keep practicing, I'm sure you'll be a formidable warrior in no time. That's pretty high praise when it's coming from you. She smiles and blushes. Leanna extends a hand and helps me back into my feet. It would be better if I could watch you spar with someone else. That way, I can see your movement from different angles and give you better feedback. Unless the Pago can use a sword, the only other option is Zack. I look around and spot Zack leaning against a tree closer to our sparring location. He watches us with his arms crossed. Wait, how long has he been here? Leanna rushes over to him. Zack! Hmm? Would you be willing to duel with him? She points at me. I'd like to get a better look at his technique. He merely stares at her. Oh, right. You need a blade. Leanna holds her blade to Zack. He takes it from her and inspects it. What are the rules of the duel? Standard spar. Be the first one to knock your opponent to the ground. Zack nods and heads towards the field. As Leanna returns to me, we share a glance. That was surprisingly easy. I guess it's not in a mercenary's nature to back down from a fight, even if it is a fake one. Are you two ready? I step a decent distance away from Zack and ready my blade. Yep. Zack continues to stand there. I look at Leanna again, she just shrugs. He nods. Okay, begin! I rush forward. And suddenly I'm on the ground, staring up at the sky with an aching pain in my chest and the wind knocked out of me. I groan. Strange. I thought he'd last at least two shots. Zack! What? Why did you use your discharger? Why not? Leanna steps forward. The whole point was to have a sword match with him. You didn't list that as a rule. Her frustration is evident in her voice. Why else would I give you my sword? Why did you give me your sword? For you to use! She snatches her blade back from Zack and heads over to me. Are you hurt? My pride. So this is what it feels like to be emasculated. Twice. My gaze drifts past Leanna to the blue sky behind her. At least the view is nice. Leanna helps me up again. The one and only lesson you need to know when fighting. Do whatever it takes to win. As soon as he's done speaking, Zack turns around and heads back to the campsite. Leanna huffs. Ugh, mercenaries can be so annoying sometimes. Uh, his advice is relevant. Maybe so, but his point seems pretty valid. Leanna shakes her head. There's more to a battle than winning. Like honor, justice, and even mercy if the case calls for it. The last thing you want to do is forget who you are and turn into your enemy. Hmm. Anyway, I think we've had enough practice for one day. We should pack up and continue on our journey. I nod and follow Leanna back to camp. We pack up our things and clean up the campsite. Then we continue our journey. As we walk, we slip into a comfortable silence. Zack lingers behind Leanna and I while the pongo returns to his usual spot on my head. After a few hours, it doesn't feel like we're getting any closer. So, how long until we reach Illumia?
We'll need to stop at Raven Pass to restock and spend the night. But if we continue to make good time, we'll reach Illumia by midday tomorrow. One more day of walking. If only I had brought my bit fit, I would have had my daily steps done for a lifetime. I nod and we fall back into silence. By mid-afternoon, we arrive at the gates of a settlement even smaller than Meadow Hill Village. The town consists of an inn and a few shops, the bare essentials. They probably only ever see travelers like us, people passing through on their way to Illumia. Okay, we should stock up on supplies. I'll be making a stop at the weaponsmith. Zack pats the two holster discharges by his side. Now that I think about it, I only saw him using one during the bandit ambush. The other one must have already been damaged. I'll check out the shop since my weapons are okay on repairs. I'll go with you. Leanna smiles. Zack nods. See you soon, then. He turns down another path. Let's go! Leanna smiles back at me as she leads the way to the shops. Wait up! We find the general store with ease since the marketplace itself is quite small. In fact, I'm surprised by how busy the store is. I guess if you're the only general store around, business is bound to be good. As Leanna picks out a couple items, I look around the shop. I notice people of all backgrounds wearing clothes ranging from the leather I'd seen in Meadow Hill to intricately embroidered robes. They really do get all types traveling through here. Once Leanna is finished, I follow her to the counter to pay for her items. Will that be all for today? Leanna nods. Your total comes to 34 coins. 34? Leanna's eyes widen. 34 coins for these? It should be at most 30. The shopkeeper frowns apologetically. He doesn't seem too happy about the price either. I'm sorry, miss. The goods themselves are only 20 coins. The rest of the cost is the 70% tax. And I thought taxes in America were bad. Hope we at least get free universal health insurance and education with those taxes. Both Leanna and the shopkeeper look at me in confusion. Leanna furrows her brow. I don't remember the tax being so high in the past. The mayor only recently increased the tax. Has no one asked why? It doesn't seem fair. The man nods. We did in the beginning, but then the mayor hired enforcers of the new law. Leanna frowns but doesn't say anything more. The shopkeeper continues to look apologetic as he gestures at her, at her items. I'm really sorry about this, miss, but I don't have any other choice. I understand. It's not your fault. She hands over the coins. Thank you for understanding. Safe travels. As we head out, Lana seems quieter than usual. Are you okay? Something about this just doesn't seem right. New tax rules and new guards to enforce them? I came through here only a few days ago on my way to Meadow Hill, and the tax hadn't been changed then. It all seems too sudden. Let's investigate. We should find out what's going on here. Leanna blinks. Really? I nod. Can't just leave it alone if something follows that play here. Leanna smiles. You're right. Anyway, let's go meet up with Zack. I nod. We make our way to the lane of Armory and Smiths and peek through a few shop windows before we spot Zack. A guard looms over him. Uh-oh, this doesn't look promising. Leanna frowns as we enter the shop. This doesn't concern you. Stay out of it. It became my concern when you threatened him in front of me. Threatened? All I told him was what may happen to his store if he doesn't pay up for these protective services. The old-fashioned oops insurance. Leave. Now. The guard laughs. What makes you think I'd listen to you? Zack glares at the guard as he flips open his coat and reveals his discharger. He grips the second discharger on the table. The color drains from the guard's face. Two dischargers with purple spears and a black trench coat. It can't be. Zack shifts slightly, increasing the ferocity in his eyes. The guard tries to hide his fear with false bravado. He turns towards the shopkeeper. You're lucky your friend was here today. He won't always be here, though. After imparting one last subtle threat, the guard hurries out of the shop, brushing past Leanna and I. Zack relaxes and the shopkeeper sighs in relief. Thank you. That have to do with this new tax you mentioned? 
shopkeeper nods. The taxes just keep growing. I've tried to keep my prices as low as possible for the customers, but then our taxes grow and, well, you saw what happens next. His fingers tremble as he takes back the discharger. I think he's still shaken up by what happened. I'm sorry. I still need a few more minutes to finish up the repairs. It would have been done by now if we hadn't been interrupted. Zack nods. The weaponsmith gives him a grateful smile as he returns to his workroom. Tax issues again? It looks like it's affecting all of the stores. And it's only going to get worse. I'm not going to let it escalate. Leanne and I glance at Zack in surprise. You two head to the inn. I have something to take care of first. What are you planning to do? I'm going to pay a visit to the mayor. We'll help. We're coming to. Zack looks surprised. Something here is just not right. We can't sit by and do nothing. Shocky returns and places Zack's discharger on the counter. All fixed. Thanks. Here. Zack offers coins to the vendor who shakes his head. Please, don't worry about it. You've already done me a huge favor by helping me with the guard. Zack holsters his discharger and places the coins on the counter anyway. I insist. The shopkeeper looks conflicted, then sighs and nods gratefully. Zack leads the way out of the shop and through the town. His footsteps are long and full of purpose, which is a change from his quiet and cautious demeanor. I can't help but look at him with a newfound respect. This is the first time I've seen him so determined and driven. Soon we arrive in front of a large, elaborate mansion. It looks very out of place compared to the modest shops in the rest of the town. Two men guard the entrance. Hmm. Zack pauses and sizes up the guards. I'm gonna try to talk my way in. We should ask them if we can see the mayor. I doubt that would work. It doesn't hurt to try. Zack frowns, but after some thought, he nods. We'll try that first. If that fails, we go to plan B. Plan B? Zack has already moved towards the guards and doesn't hear my question. I face Leanna. Do you know what his plan B is? She shakes her head. Let's just hope it doesn't resort to that. We catch up to Zack. Halt! What is your business here? We're here to see the mayor. Does he expect your audience? Zack shakes his head. No, but I need to speak with him about this latest tax hike. The tax hike? The guards glance at each other and lower their weapons slightly. It almost seems as if they disapprove of the taxes, too. You guys don't seem too happy with the taxes, either. One of the guards hesitates, then nods. My sister runs the bakery in town, and the taxes have been hurting her business. Then why haven't you done anything about it? We tried, as have some of the other guards. When we protested, the treasurer recommended the mayor hire real guards. He glowers as he mentions the treasurer. Treasurer? Yeah, things have gone really strange ever since he came to town. Suddenly the mayor is passing crazy rules he never would have passed before. The other guard elbows his comrade. Quiet down. Do you want one of his lackeys to hear? The first guard frowns and falls silent. Leanna raises a hand to her chin in thought. This treasurer sounds really suspicious. The guard motions to her manipulator. Wait, you're a mage knight? Leanna blinks. Yes, that's correct. Can you scan the treasurer for magic use? I swear, he's doing... Not your crazy theories again. They already have a court mage to see to that. Yes, a court mage who was assigned by the treasurer. The second guard frowns, but doesn't reply. If we let you through, will you just scan around and see if you notice anything? Leanna nods. Yes, I'll do what I can. Just be careful. Some of the treasurer's hired guards may not be so fond of you poking around. Both guards step to the side. On your way. Let's go. So there you go, the greatest battle, the one not fought. Zack leads the way again. We follow behind as Leanna fiddles with her manipulator. As we progress through the mansion, we pass unnoticed by the clerks and guards milling about. They must assume we have reason to be here if we got through the front door. Leanna stares intently at her manipulator, her brow furrowed in confusion. This doesn't make any sense. What is it? The readings. They're so erratic. It's almost like there's... but there can't be. There's what? Shadow magic. Zack looks sharply at Leanna. Shadow magic? She reluctantly nods. Zack sets his jaw and tightens his grip on his discharger's. 
So, uh, shadow magic. Someone mind telling me what that is? It's forbidden magic. She is entirely focused on her manipulator. It's coming from... She jogs down a hallway and stops in front of a mahogany double door. Behind there. Suddenly, a voice calls out from behind us. It's you! Staying down the hall is the same guard from the shop. How did you get in here? Intruders! All eyes fall on us as begins yelling. The guards who previously ignored us now draw their weapons as they close in. Zack pulls out his dischargers. You go deal with whatever that is. I'll keep them busy here. Zack kicks down one of the tables and drops behind it for cover. Go! Now! As he raises his guns, purple energy swirls to life. He rains a hail of energy bolts down the hall in suppressive fire. Leanna bursts through the doors and I stay at her heels. The noise from the battle gradually fades away as we run deeper into the mansion. Eventually, the hall leads into a study. A carved wooden desk laden with books and ledgers is in the center with bookcases surrounding it. A man wearing a hooded dark robe sits at the desk. He scribbles something with one hand while the other is hidden within his robe. An older man sits on the other side of the desk. His graying hair sticks out in strange angles and his embroidered clothes are slightly askew. He stares at the open ledgers on the desk, but his eyes are dull, as if they aren't really seeing it. Two guards stand by the doorway, as still as statues, with those same dull eyes. The treasurer rises to his feet. Who let these two in? I explicitly said no visitors! Leanna's manipulator pulses wildly, especially when she raises her arm towards him. It's him! He's the source of the shadow magic! Neither the mayor nor the guards react. How dare you make such accusations! Arrest her immediately! The guards ready their weapons. Stop! We aren't here to fight you! It's no use! He's influencing them with shadow magic! A gust of wind gathers around Leanna, violently whipping her hair and clothes. It concentrates in her gauntleted palm, and she hurls it at them. The wind knocks the guards against the walls and blows open the rope of the treasurer, exposing his hidden hand. Within his palm is a dark crystal sphere. It looks like a marble of darkness and swirling smoke. From within the crystal are shadow tendrils, which extend to the mayor and his two unconscious guards. Lana's voice is flat when she speaks. I've never heard her sound so serious before. The tainted spear, and the branding of void. You... you have seen too much. The treasurer raises the black sphere high, and shadow energy shoots straight towards Leanna. She raises her hand and creates another ball of wind, which she fires at the shadowy bolt. The shadow ball cuts through Leanna's magic like a knife through butter, and her wind scatters harmlessly into the room. <gasps> so, we gotta be the hero. It's our name, after all. Leanna! I dash towards her and knock her out of the way. I take the full brunt of the shadow blast and flung back against the wall. Agony sears my body. I grew through the pain and look at Leanna. Doesn't look like any of the magic hit her. She rushes over her face in a mix of bewilderment and concern. <laughs> you got this. I read the script. She's got it. Don't worry. I muster up a smile. Go get him. That was so reckless. Leanna unsheathes her blade. A determined fire in her eyes. She faces the treasure and raises her sword. Her manipulator glows with power, which flows into her blade, encasing it in a similar glow. Magic particles swirl around as static sparks of energy lash out from her weapon. In an instant, she dashes towards the treasure at an inhuman speed. He fires two shadow bolts, but Leanna uses her blade to cut through the air and shoots off slices of energy, which cut through the shadow magic. What? Yeah! Leanna lunges and charges her blade towards the treasurer. Just before her sword of pierce and the treasurer throws his tainted sphere to the ground. It shatters apart and the shadowy mist leaks out of the orb, enclosing the room in a dark fog. The thick fog clouds my vision so I can't see anything. As it slowly begins to fade, I make a Leanna watching her surroundings, but the treasurer is nowhere to be seen. When she doesn't see her enemy, the glow from her sword fades away. The mayor lets out a throaty groan. He rubs at his head, his eyes now looking groggy, like somebody who has just woken up. What is... Leanna sheathes her blade. Take it easy. You were under the effects of shadow magic. 
Shadow magic? He shakes his head as if to free his thoughts. He must be trying to shake off the lingering effects of the magic. Is... is it finally over? Leanna nods. The mayor takes a few more minutes to compose himself. When his eyes seem more focused, he sighs in relief. You have my thanks. Suddenly the door barges open and Zack raises in. Behind him is a wave of guards. Stop him! He's with us! The mayor stands unsteadily on his feet but addresses the guards. Leave them be! But they... I said leave them be! They hesitate and shoot confused glance at each other, but ultimately follow the order and lower their weapons. Took you guys long enough. I knew he forgot something. He looks at me. What are you doing down there? I groan as I root it down my back. Leon offers me a hand which I accept. He took a shadow blast. Aimed for me. Zack blinks in surprise but looks impressed. Seems like you ended up being useful after all. Yep, I'm the tank of the team, I guess. Thanks? Leon checks her manipulator but it remains still. The shadow magic is gone. The mayor seems much more alert. It was my treasurer, wasn't it? Leanna nods. He sighs heavily and sits back down in his chair. When he first arrived into town, I thought he would be like all the other travelers and go on his way. But he said he knew how to make this town even greater than what it is now. He had ideas on how we could become more than just a wayward stop. The first step was to increase taxes to build up our treasury. He hangs his head in his hands. All I wanted was to help the people here have better lives. All I've done is cause them suffering. You weren't in control of yourself. But it was me who made all the rulings and enforced those tax laws. Leanna shakes her head. It wasn't you. That man had a tainted sphere, and he was using it to influence you. The mayor leans back. He looks tired as if a huge weight was dropped on him. I don't deserve to continue as mayor of this town. One of the guards steps forward. That's not true. I look over at the voice and recognize him as one of the guards formerly controlled by shadow magic. I know what it's like when he used that magic. All I could think about was how I could become an honor guard. The thought was overwhelming and I'd do anything to achieve it. I know that wasn't the real you, Mayor. The other formerly controlled guard steps forward and nods. Me too. Little Garrett still plays with the toy sword you gave him for his birthday. Says he's practicing for when he joins the guard too. The other guards in the room murmur their assent. There's nobody who can run this town better than you. The mayor glances at the hopeful faces of his guard. In this small town, I can believe that he knows each of them by name. Finally, he gives them a weak smile. I suppose somebody needs to clean up this mess. He gets back to his feet and turns to us. I don't know how to thank you for what you've done for us. Leanna smiles warmly. I'm glad we were able to help. Zack and I nod. You must be exhausted. Please, feel free to stay at Raven Pass for as long as you like. You are always welcome here. Thank you. The three of us leave the mayor to his business and head out of the mansion. Once outside, I glance up at the darkening sky. Leanna mirrors my movements. We should rest up for the night. Agreed. I nod. I saw the inn back towards the shops. Zack leads the way. After turning down a side street, we see the lighted sign for the Hog's Head Inn. I stifle a yawn as we head inside. Zack and I sit down at a table while Leanna speaks with the innkeeper. She returns with two room keys, looking a bit shocked. Wordlessly, she passes one to Zack. What's going on? The innkeeper refused to let us pay for the rooms or food. Said it was by order of the mayor, and one he would happily oblige. That was really nice of him. She nods. Another silence falls over us, but this one feels natural and not a bit uncomfortable. After a few minutes, the staff brings out three steaming bowls and places one in front of each of us. Once the bowl hits the table, Zack digs in with gusto and practically inhales his food. Leanne and I share a look before we grab our spoons. Stew again. She nods. It's hearty and filling. Rabbit again? Actually, this time it's venison. Oh, we got Thumper, now it's Bambi. I take a bite. Better than rabbit. No way, this is even better. Bambi had it coming. Leanna grins. I like venison more. 
I try not to wince every time I use my spoon. The fire has eased out of my body, but my shoulder still throbs from when I landed on the ground. Leanna glances at me, then gets up and walks back to the innkeeper. She returns with a compress in her hand. She offers it to me with a smile. This should help with the pain. I hold it against my shoulder and smile appreciatively as the pain slowly melts into a dull ache. Thanks for helping me back there. I smile. Anytime. I continue digging into my meal. So, what exactly makes shadow magic bad? It's far more dangerous than any other elemental magic. And it's incredibly unstable and volatile. The most serious thought of shadow magic is how it's able to amplify the shadowy thoughts of someone's mind. So the treasurer was manipulating what the mayor was already feeling? She nods. He might have wanted to help the town by looking to expand, but there's also a bit of selfishness on his part for wanting to do that too. Either greed for more money coming in, and more luxurious goods, or wanting more fame and recognition. Everyone has thoughts like that. It's just a matter of keeping those thoughts in check. Leanna nods. Shadow magic, unfortunately, lets those desires loose in a destructive way. Is there any way to block against it? Unless you are a mage, not really. Leanna picks at her food. Most people can't control the magic well, and it's very easy for it to backfire and cause more harm to the caster than the attended target. That treasure seemed to be handling it well. She looks even more worried. I know. Which is even more troubling, considering the fact that shadow magic is outlawed in Havengard. Zack pushes his now empty bowl away from him. I think he's part of Void. Leanna's frown deepens. I think so too. I noticed the branding on his forearm. What's Void? The practitioners of shadow magic. They first rose to power during the struggle of the Three Kingdoms, before the Treaty of Asaria. They wanted to grow their power in the outreach of shadow magic. And a lot of innocent people were killed in the process. At the height of their power, they grew so powerful and were so destructive that the Three Kingdoms had to set aside their differences and band together. That's when the treaty was formed. Part of the agreement was to outlaw shadow magic. Are you really telling me it took three kingdoms to take down one cult? Shadow magic is a lot more powerful than any other elemental magic. Which is why there are people who still want to practice it. It's impossible to stabilize the magic. So it's deemed too dangerous to be used. Zack nods. I see. No wonder both Leanna and Zack seemed so grim when they first noticed the shadow magic. I stifle another yawn. Is everyone done eating? Zack and I both nod. Then I suggest we head to bed. I second that motion. I'm exhausted. I know. She grins and I can feel a rush of warmth in my face. I guess she saw my yawn. Zack leads the way upstairs, clutching one of the keys. We stop in front of two adjoining doors. Well, good night then. Good night. Zack nods. Lena turns the key and lets herself into the room. Then gently closes the door behind her. Zack also turns the key and lets himself into the second room. As I'm about to follow him in, the door slams shut. Very funny. I turn the handle, but it's locked. What the hell? Zack, let me in. He ignores me, so I pound on the door. Come on, let me in. He doesn't answer, but a couple of people poke their heads out of their rooms and glare at me. This is ridiculous. I knock on Leanna's door. Leanna. She opens the door a crack and then pulls it open all the way when she recognizes me. Her brows are creased with worry. Is something wrong? I need you to beat up Zack. Zack's being mean. Zack locked me out of the room. She blinks. Really? Is that it? And I need to get in there? Alright, then get in there. How? She smirks. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Good night. Traitor! She closes the door. That didn't go as expected. <sighs> Try again. I continue hammering repeatedly on the door. I can keep this up all night. Suddenly the door swings open and I walk in. The first thing I notice are the two twin beds. Zack lounges on one and fixes his stony gaze on me. What the hell was that? Why don't you let me in? No space. There are two beds! Zack relentlessly walks over to the other bed and pulls back the blankets. 
tucked inside with the bed are both of his dischargers. Not cool, man. Not cool. Those are supposed to be under your pillow, damn it. I go to remove the weapons. What are you doing? This is my bed. But then where will they sleep? Under your pillow. Jeez, why can't he be like a civilized person? I just look at him. Finally, he sighs and collects his dischargers. I lie back on the bed, and as soon as my head hits the pillow, I am asleep. And there will be a bonus scene before we move forward, so let's jump to it. I want to stay with you. No, I was just thinking it'd be nice if we spent the night together. She narrows her eyes and slams the door shut. Damn, that's two for two.